You got this. Alright, you ready? We'll do all the work for it. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I built a home adjustable climbing wall um, right here behind me. And I'm gonna make this video to talk about um, the steps I took and hopefully help anyone who's interested in doing the same thing. Um, so mine is an eight foot by eight foot uh, fully adjustable climbing wall. And it actually adjusts on an electric winch and then is supported by chains. Um, so you use the winch to lower and raise the angle depending on what you want and then you use the chains to support it once you get in that angle. Um, so there's lots of resources out there, lots of videos talking about um, how to build a home climbing wall as far as picking out plywood and you know drilling all the, the T-nut holes and all that. I'm not going to cover all of that stuff because it's already out there. I'm just going to talk about um, the steps I took, uh, how much time it took, how much money it costs, um, and then all the footage I have of us building it. Um, but this is it, and it came out fucking fantastic. I'm super stoked on it, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. So it might seem super straightforward, <laughs> but the first step, obviously, is to figure out where you want your home climbing wall. Uh, so for me, I have a three car garage and I found that on the left side, without interfering with the uh, garage door track, I had an eight foot by eight foot space. Um, unfortunately, I don't have very high ceilings, uh, so I couldn't make a very tall wall, but an eight foot by eight foot would fit quite well and could uh, hinge almost vertical, just in case I ever needed to park a car on this side. The next step was to figure out the design of the wall. I knew where I wanted it to be, and I knew that I wanted it to be on some sort of angle, but I didn't know much besides that. Um, so I found this article on REI.com, which kind of gave me some of the, the baselines for what materials to use, what things to consider, um, some of the hardware that you needed. And so I used this for a lot of my design. Although this is for, um, so here, they talk about what size, plywood, um, three quarter inch ACX is usually what's recommended. They talk about whether you use two by sixes or two by eights for the studs. Um, and so a lot of this went into my design because I trusted this resource as something that was probably over-engineered, which is what I wanted. Um, the issue with these designs though is that they were all uh, static. They would not change angle at all and they were not adjustable. Um, so then I went looking and I found this great mountain project forum called What Does Your Woody Look Like 2.0? Uh, and as I scrolled through it, I found this post by Greg where he's talking about his garage woody. I have almost the exact same design because I liked what he did. He has the electric winch, he has the chain supporting, he's got the kickboard with the hinges, um, and I just really liked everything about this design. So this inspired uh, a lot of what I did, and I highly recommend checking out this forum, um, specifically this thread if you're interested. Um, and then eventually I came to my super sick design <laughs> that I made in paint here. Um, so I have the headboard that'll be mounted at the top of the wall. It'll have uh, the winch line going to the back of the uh, climbing wall. And then down at the bottom is where things actually got probably the most tricky. So lining up the hinges um, from the bottom of the wall onto the kickboard, and then also getting my kickboard to fit up against the wall. So I have a, a, a unique situation where I have a baseboard and then I also have like a block of concrete at the bottom to where I can't build a kickboard that goes right up against the wall. So I had to design some sort of uh, stabilized kickboard that I could mount and then I could mount the wall to that. So this ended up being pretty much the final design and what we went off of uh, when we were building the wall. All right, so this is a two by six piece of wood and it's nine feet long. And what this is going to be is a, I call it a headboard or a ledger. Um, this is going to attach at the wall of the garage and it's going to have this electric winch here, which will attach to the wall and change the angle as you power it. And then these two 
D-ring plates, which is where the chain will attach. To. So, on the Nick and Uriah building show, today we have our headboard, two by six, nine feet. We're gonna see where the studs are, line it up. Um, we have one driver, one drill, um, and a bunch of big wood screws. All right, so at this point, 36 minutes in, we have found the stud lines that we want to mount the right and the left side, and we've drawn those out, and we've pre-drilled and started um, three wood screws that will then go into the stud. Your eyes over here, drawn out the opposite side, and he's gonna drill those. So after we had found all the studs, uh, we pre-drilled all the uh, screw holes and then also the bolt holes for the chain plates and the winch. Um, and then once we did this, we decided we want to spray paint it and give it a protective coating. Once it was spray painted, we could then start driving all of the screws that would go into the studs and we were able to mount uh, the chain plates and the winch with the bolts that we had picked out for them. This way everything would be good to go. We'd hold the headboard up to the pre-drilled stud holes and then we'd just attach it. So we did end up mounting it, uh, but unfortunately we then had to take it back down because it wasn't flush with the wall because everything was bolted. Uh, so we learned the hard way, taking it down um, and then drilling some big holes into the drywall to give space for the back of the bolts. And then we remounted it and it was significantly better. Okay, that's better. So, this is my kickboard prototype. Um, I cut off, so I bought the two by eights and I cut them to the length that I needed for this, which is nine feet. Um, and then I used the scraps to make a prototype of how I want the kickboard to fit on the ground and against the wall. Um, so here we have two by eights, two by eight, two by eight, two by eight, and then a two by four. So the first thing I did was I clamped these together um, screwed them in intervals, and then I attached the shelf here. And the way this is gonna go is it will go right here. Um, this way it will be very sturdy down to support weight, and it will also push into the wall, um, and we'll have brackets that will connect to studs. So this will be a nine foot piece, and on top of it will be these strap hinges. Um, and this is where the frame of the board will go. So the winch and the chains will allow the frame to angle um, while it rests on this. and the winch. The second step is the kickboard. Um, so down here is gonna be a, a row of feet, but also the base of the wall. So on top of this will go these hinges that will hold the frame of the climbing wall, like so. So this is sturdy, won't be moving anywhere. And then the wall will mount to this and <laughs> and hinge on the hinges as the winch and the chains change the angle. So today, we have lumber. We have 10 two by sixes. We're gonna cut them all down to eight feet. Um, that'll give us the framing pieces, um, all at the length that we want, and then it'll also give us uh, cut off blockers that we'll put in between the frame to kind of support the strength, because we don't want any flex. 
So yeah, let's get to it. Once we had finished the frame, including the short blocker pieces just to provide some more rigidity, uh, we went and got the pre-installed T-nut plywood panels um, and laid each of these on top to be installed on the frame. Um, and one thing I want to really stress is that the wall is super heavy. So if you do decide to build your own, definitely build it right next to the location uh, that it will live. Um, this could not be moved into this location if we had built it anywhere else. Um, you, you'll see it's hard for us even to get it into position from where it is now. Now that we're moving the wall into position, um, we use two automotive jacks to lift it up to the height we need it uh, in order to install the hinges. You can see I'm lifting the left one and then I'll go ahead and lift the right one until we get it just right um, and perfectly at the height we need it. While I'm installing the hinges, Uriah is installing the eye bolts. Um, these will hold the chain attachment points as well as the winch line. With everything installed, the only thing left to do was use the winch to lift the wall. Got this. After we lifted the wall using the winch and saw that it was supported, uh, the only thing left to do was to shorten the chains um, just a little bit longer than the winch line. Uh, this way we could lower the wall using the winch so that it was fully supported by the chains and not just the one winch line. So, uh, <laughs> we'll probably shoot this again in the day, but basically came out the way I expected and just as terrifying as I thought it would be to actually pull it up. Mm -hmm. 
Once the wall was up, um, we started cleaning, we vacuumed all the dust, uh, put all the extra stuff away, uh, and then Uriah got straight to work setting. Um, we installed a row of seven feet that will always be on as part of the kickboard. Um, and then he started installing some of the holds that I had gotten previously on Facebook Marketplace. Um, and he set the first problem, which remains up to this day. Uh, I also really wanted to use these old uh, jujitsu mats that I had laying around. Um, so I set them up to make the whole area padded just so you could walk around barefoot nice and comfortably and also keep it fairly safe. So that is how I built the wall. Um, as promised, I wanted to go over pretty much all the logistics that went into it, the total cost, the time, the tools used. Um, and all of that stuff because those are the questions I had um, when trying to decide how to build my own. Um, I saw lots of different videos and write-ups uh, but a lot of the really key details are missing um, so I wanted to make sure I included those in my video. Um, so this first sheet that we're looking at is just all of the items that I bought for the actual build of the wall. I'll attach the spreadsheet because that way anyone can look at it and all the links to all the products are in here. So the Lowe's links, the Amazon links, all that if you want to see exactly um, what I bought. Um, so back to the list, um, really heavy duty chains, uh, cost about 60 bucks, uh, an angle finder just to figure out where the wall was set to. Um, I have the L brackets, the large one and the small ones that I used. Um, D-ring tie downs, those are the big black metal things that went on the headboard um, and that's where the chains attach to. Those are also rated for crazy amounts of weight um, and I just really wanted to over engineer everything uh, that was related to safety. Um, I got the eye bolts on Amazon, uh, really took a lot of time finding all of these items because I needed them to fit specific uh, sizes. Um, the winch I got from Harbor Freight for 170 bucks. Uh, the plywood panels, um, and this is something I want to talk about. I didn't buy them myself. I didn't install the T-nuts myself. Um, if you have to, there's easy ways to do it. But I really suggest looking on Craigslist and Facebook for anything that you're looking to use. Um, so for me, I found a bunch of panels uh, nearby from someone who had broken down an old climbing gym and had a bunch of spare panels. Um, so for only 50 bucks each, I went and picked those up and saved me tons of time and it actually saved me a lot of money too. Um, so I picked up four of them. The first two I picked up were painted and textured and that's what I thought I was going to use. But while we were there, I saw the plain ones and I liked those better. So we went back the next day, got the extra two and those are the ones we ended up using. Um, so I really didn't even need that extra hundred bucks in this budget. Um, then I have all the 2x6s and 2x8s that I bought uh, as part of this from Lowe's. Um, tons of screws, the hinges, and the spray paint. So all in all, it costs about $890, uh, $790 if we take out those spare panels that I didn't end up using. Um, and that's what went into actually assembling and putting this wall up. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the price of everything else because I know most people are like, well, how much were the holds? Um, so also the holds I got on Facebook, um, 900 bucks for about $2,000 worth of holds. So he sent me links to everything that he had um, and it really was tons of money on holds and I was able to get them, including the shipping price of 200 bucks uh, for 900. Um, I also got uh, setters tools, a bunch of bolts, and um, a mattress bag cover for an old uh, mattress I had, which is what we actually use for our crash pad. Um, so all in all, about a thousand bucks for the holds that went on originally. Since then, I've gotten way more holds. As you can see, it's pretty sprayed up. Um, but this is all that went into that first uh, set and really lasted us for a while and could have lasted us for a very long time. So all in all, 2000 bucks roughly uh, to build this wall. Uh, the next thing is the schedule. So it took us a total of 33 hours of work to do this. Um, probably an extra 40 to 60 hours of researching and going through forums and Googling different stuff. Uh, but because I 
did figure it out and broke it all down, hopefully it saves you a bunch of time um, and you can just reserve your time for the actual building. So the first day, we spent a couple hours to go pick up the first two panels that we didn't end up using. Uh, the next day, we picked up the second two panels that we did want. Uh, one week later, we went to Lowe's for our, our first trip for a um, bunch of wood, took a couple hours, and then we really got into it. So uh, the next day, I spent about eight hours painting and assembling and mounting the headboard. Um, that included putting on the winch and all of that. So the headboard took one full day of work um, and then three hours on cutting the kickboard and building the kickboard. Um, let's see, another three hour trip to Lowe's to get uh, framing supplies and wood um, and to prep the garage. Uh, another three hours to paint the kickboard and then put it into the garage and install it to the studs. And then one 10 hour day to <laughs> cut everything, frame it, um, line it up, Put on the hinges winch it up all of that um, so all in all about 33 hours and again some of it we didn't actually have to do uh, and then the last thing i wanted to cover is the tools um, so i didn't have to buy any tools luckily i had everything from when i built a recording studio in my house uh, a few years ago so a couple of drills uh, a circular saw pencil and t-square stud finder uh, the two jacks that I use are just for my car, but we use those to raise the wall frame in order to mount the hinges. Uh, gloves, uh, had a little work table and clamps, a bunch of drill bits, uh, a couple of ladders, and then the shop back for cleanup. So that's about it. I don't wanna think too much.